Well, there you go. Everyone who was a big fan of the WandaVision show, Doctor Strange 2 makes it matter. Yeah, kind of. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Doctor Strange Into the Multiverse of Madness. And I was quite excited for this film. Admittedly, the Marvel fatigue has really started to hit me. We're just never gonna get an experience like Infinity War and Endgame, but I am still kind of curious to see what kind of different wackiness and visions that we could get. And since this was directed by Sam Raimi, the guy who brought us Spider-Man in all of his glory, both good and bad, I was happy to see him be a part of this film. The ref References to his work, whether it's from his camera work, to his setting, to his very sly but well-placed inclusion of horror, to all these tidbits and easter eggs from Raimi's history of making films, it was cool to see these bits. What's good? Doctor Strange is trying to kind of carry on from the events of Endgame, all the while checking in on Wanda to see what's going on with her. All because of this girl is hopping multiverses and falls into Strange's. Now there is the issue though where Strange wants to help her, Wanda wants her for her own reasons and the connection with her obsession, her want to get her children back. And that pits these two against each other, which I will say I actually really enjoyed Wanda as the antagonist, I guess you would say, in this film. I liked how they took that character into this arc of feeling sympathy for the villain. This is something that Marvel's needed to improve on for quite some time. Aside from Thanos and a few other villains, you never really could side with them or understand their cause. Wanda's cause is not even really of any kind of malicious intent. She just wants what she can't have. And that's kind of the catharsis of her character in this. Even though she's a badass bitch in this movie, there's a lot of shit that Wanda does that is really, really stretching into the realm of horror. And I am surprised that there is as much in this movie as it is for a Marvel PG-13. We're used to seeing barely any goddamn blood. Aunt May died, then didn't die, then got up and died all without losing any kind of blood and no way home. In this one, there's some shit that happens that I genuinely laughed out loud. And not laughed out loud because I thought it was funny. I admittedly I did. Complete surprise. The visual element of this film is very cool. It's not so much relying off of really cool, weird, fucking with your head landscapes that Scott Derrickson, I believe his name is, that was the director of the first film, did. This one admittedly goes for a mixture of looking like practical, but really still going into that Sam Raimi man of madness. The amount of Evil Dead reference work in this film is numerous, and I loved it. Did I care about the movie though? That is admittedly kind of a double-edged question. While I did like what Wanda was going through, and I did like kind of the middle part, which for a lot of you is probably gonna make you come in your pants for a bit of the scenes. So that's the most I'm gonna give you, but, and maybe how we get to the conclusion of the film, because that part is also crazy, it still suffers from that Marvel fatigue. You know exactly how you're gonna get from point A to point B. And that's kind of how it is with almost every superhero movie, but you kind of want to see if you can get there in a different way. And aside from Wanda's maliciousness in this film, everything else kind of plays out how you would expect. And I'm not going to really blame Sam Raimi for this. You know, he does the what the best he can. There were some reshoots I heard that happened, and I know probably exactly where they are, and they look like reshoots. It's a spooky movie, and that's probably the most gratifying part about this movie is the spooks you'll get, the little scares. Both funny and actually scary. And admittedly, probably the funniest joke is at the very, very, very end of the movie. It is the post-post-credit scene. That's the funniest joke because it's right up there with Sam Raimi and his style of filmmaking and humor. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness really does rely on Wanda being your crux, being the main reason for viewers to be engaged with the story. Because while Strange is, he's got this inner catharsis thing that's trying to go on, but it's just so lame and so haphazard that you don't really care about what's happening to him. You care more so about what's happening around him. And this film does make itself as a setup movie. No, I think this is more so 
Marvel answering some questions without answering some questions. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Don't spoil it in the comments. So you've got some cool visuals. You've got some cool horror. you got a main character that's kind of eh, but you have a villain that is well-rounded and makes you care about what their plight is. I still don't think it's that woohoo though. Now, as I've said, that is my fatigue. That is my Marvel movie fatigue coming in. And the fact that I was looking forward to this movie a while ago, quite a bit, that want and that excitement just kind of fell down the closer and closer I got to this movie because I knew it wasn't going to do what they said they were going to do. They said they were going to make this a full-on horror movie. I, I knew it wasn't going to get that, but I was hoping to get more than this. And even with Sam Raimi, who is a master of horror in his own way, that I still don't get that either. But let me make something clear. It's not a bad movie. It's just an average one. So in the end, I'm going to give Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness a 4 out of 7. Marvel fans, you'll probably love it. I see that it's busting numbers at the box office already. It even beat Batman for opening weekend. But for those of you who are kind of still reaching, hoping, wanting for that thing that is going to give you that same feeling that Infinity War gave you, that Endgame gave you, really Infinity War, let's be honest. I don't think it's ever coming back, guys. But those are my thoughts on this movie. What do you guys think? Tell me what you guys thought about this movie in the comments below. But try and hold back on the spoilers because don't want to spoil it for other people, of course. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.